warm welcome to God Day once again. And today, I want to encourage all of us, including myself, to have more confidence. I want to talk today about the benefits of confidence. When I grew up, admittedly, I did not have a lot of confidence. I remember my first European trip. I was in Paris. I was, I think, 19 years old, 18 years old, something like that. And I was staying in a youth hostel. And I saw this beautiful, beautiful French receptionist. And I knew she must have been maybe three or four years older than me, but I was like stricken, I was in love, and I was brought up to think that French people and French food and wine was superior to, to, to everything American, because my dad only drank French wine, he invested in it, he only ate French cheese, et cetera, et cetera. So I grew up thinking that the French are kind of superior, in, in, in some way. So I see this girl as a 19-year-old teenager, and I immediately just have a crush. I fall in love with her, whatever that means. And I just, like, I didn't pray for confidence because I wasn't a Christian then. But I just said, oh, I just need confidence. I need confidence because it was such a scary thing to go up and, and ask her out. So I kind of put on a, a fake confident air, pretended like nothing fazed me, pretended that I was confident, and I went up to her and I asked her out, and basically she said, oh, you're too young for me. And suddenly I lost my confidence. <laughs> I threw it away. And I often wonder, how would my life be? Would my life be better? Would I have a more enjoyable, successful, fruitful life if I had had more confidence? And my wife and I, we love watching Hallmark movies. We, we are a sucker for romantic movies. And this one movie, I forget the name of it, but it was about a girl, uh, uh, you know, and, uh, and these Hallmark movies kind of all have a similar music, start out in, in a similar way. But this girl was being pushed around. She was an employee, just a, a, a low-level employee in a, in a huge company. And she was being pushed around and taken advantage of, and she didn't have any boundaries, and nothing was working out. Nobody noticed her. She was just kind of in the, in the back room. And then one time, she got kind of stuck in the elevator or the lift with the CEO of the company. Of course, he's like tall, and he's gorgeous, and he's young, and he's vibrant. And he's like, he looks like the perfect man. And you can just see the woman just trying to hide her face in her notes because she knows that this guy, she's thinking, oh, I'd love to meet him, I'd love to marry him, but that's an impossibility, it's never gonna happen, I, I just don't have the confidence. So anyway, it's a movie, it's not reality. She walks downstairs and who does she run into? Of course, it's almost Christmas Eve, so Santa Claus is there. So Santa Claus asks her, what one thing can I make happen for you right now? Like, what one gift do you wanna have right now? And she says, I want to have more confidence. So, of course, in the morning she wakes up and you know the whole thing. She falls in, the boss falls in love with her. She saves the company. She, uh, you know, goes out and makes millions of dollars more for the company. And all of these things happen because she had confidence. And I want to read something right here. It's a woman who, just a random woman, who writes into like a motivational guru guy because she wants to reinvent herself. And it's just a random woman, I don't even know where she's from, but I've remembered her words and I copy them from the internet. And she writes this, I have hit an all time low recently and everything that I thought defined me has been stripped away. I feel like a shell with no life left in me. However, I know that I must do something Otherwise, I could end up in a mental institution or something like that. My life is becoming more isolated and introverted and self-destructive by the day. I used to have some, some dreams and passions, but even when I think of these now, it seems like so much effort and hard work, and I hear the voices in my head telling me, you won't do it anyway. You'll start and then give up. You're a failure. You haven't got the time. You'll make excuses just like you always do. You're just an inherently fat, lazy, single mother, and it's no wonder you feel like this. You deserve to feel like this. Look, she wouldn't even say that to her worst enemy. 
You know, if you think about it, what are some of the things that you've said to yourself that you wouldn't even say to your, to your worst enemy? But we see that this woman has completely lost confidence in life, in herself, in her abilities. She will spend, the, unless she does something about it, she will spend the rest of her life avoiding challenging tasks, believing that difficult tasks and situations are beyond her capabilities, that she doesn't have what it takes. She's going to spend the rest of her life focusing on personal failings and negative outcomes her whole life. And she's losing confidence in her personal abilities. It's like, whatever I do, it doesn't make a difference. And it's sad to see, if you don't have confidence, how destructive and destitute and down in the gutter your life can be because of a lack of confidence. Her dreams, think about it, will never be fulfilled because all of her dreams are on the other side of her insecurities, of her failures, and she doesn't have energy. She just says, I can't get there. I used to have these wonderful dreams, but I don't have the energy. I don't have what it takes to reach those dreams. I can't get out of the boat because every time I've got out of the boat, I've sank and I've sank and I've sank and I've sank. And she's completely lost confidence. And really, if you think about it, I like this definition of confidence. It, sa it says this, the degree to which you think and feel your actions will achieve positive results. Now, if you look at this woman, there was not, she didn't think anything positive. She didn't feel anything positive. She basically was saying, my life does not make a difference, no matter what I do. Everything was described as a feeling. Everything she was thinking was negative, okay? So this is something that happens when we throw away our confidence. I like it. I do a lot of funerals. I do a lot of weddings, a lot of public speaking. I'm, I'm a guitarist. I like to play the guitar. I, I just love to bring joy into the lives of people. Even at a funeral, when it's a somber moment, I, I just ask God. I say, God, work through me. See, I don't have confidence in me alone but I have confidence in what God can do through me. I remember one time I was doing a very elaborate kind of billion, Russian billionaire's wedding, and they wanted an American-style wedding here in Spain. So, hey, I'm the American, so I did the American-style wedding. But it's kind of strange because the Russians, they spent probably a million euros or more on this wedding, but they didn't give me any brief. They didn't tell me what to do. So at the last minute, as I'm getting ready to walk down, you know, to meet the couple, you know, to be on stage, and there's all of these people out there, the bride tells me, oh, I want you to say something romantic. So usually, I prepare a wedding, you know, a month or sometimes a year in advance, and we discuss and plan it. But in this wedding, I was given nothing. I didn't even know what to do or say or anything like that. And I'm being filmed, and I'm walking down the stage because they have an MC and so on. So they say, and the pastor comes. So I'm walking down, and I'm still not sure what I'm going to say. And I just said, God, I put my confidence, not in my own understanding, not in my own abilities, because if I did that, I would be I just, I was scared. But I said, God, I put my trust, I put my confidence in you at this time. And I don't know what happened. There's like 60,000 roses. So I picked a rose and then I used it as a metaphor and everything went perfectly well. And Natasha, the bride, she started crying. And then her family came up to me later and said, wow, what did you do? That's the first time that we've seen her cry. So it's, I have confidence. I've learned this, not in myself, but in allowing God to minister to others through my personality. And I think there's like a certain joy and pleasure in having that confidence to be able to get up there and just let your light shine, be yourself, knowing that what you say and what you do will produce positive results. That's the kind of confidence I like. So I want to talk about, briefly, five ways that we can think and feel about confidence that will transform our lives and the lives of people around us. So five ways that we can think and feel about confident, confidence that will transform our lives and the lives of people around us. Number one, 
This is something we have to understand and know deep down. God rewards confidence. Okay, we know that the world rewards confidence. If you are a confident person and you come in for a job interview, that confidence will probably outweigh some of your shortcomings and you'll get the job even though someone who might be more qualified than you lacks that confidence. Confidence is contagious, it's attractive. Imagine if I was the president of the US of A and I was just cowering and I had no confidence. Oh well, yeah, oh boy, I'm not sure if we can fix the economy. A lot of people are gonna die. Millions are gonna be out of work. I'm sorry if I can't do much about it and I'm not projecting confidence, that would be terrible. So the world rewards confidence, but it's surprising that it says that God rewards confidence. In fact, in Hebrews chapter 10, verses 35, it says this, so do not throw away your confidence. We saw the woman that I read, she threw away her confidence. When I met that French girl and asked her out for a date, and she says, you're too young, I threw away my confidence. When I preached for the first time, and the deacons of the Baptist church told me, oh, we've heard that sermon three times in a row. I was up there and I threw away and I lost my confidence. What if we don't throw away our confidence? This is what happens. It says, so do not throw away your confidence. It will be richly rewarded. So God not only rewards confidence that we have in him, but he richly rewards it. So do not throw away your confidence, it will be richly rewarded. You need to persevere, just like that woman is gonna to have to persevere. When I did my first preach, and I failed my second, and I failed my third, I failed and my fourth, I failed, I, I had to persevere, and now that confidence, I enjoy speaking to you, I love being up here and just, and just being able to, to bless you with the little that I know. But God has richly rewarded the little confidence that I have. So you need to persevere, we know about that, so that when you have done the will of God, you will receive what he has promised. There was a, a Baptist preacher, I forget his name, it'll come to me, but he said, as Christians, he said, we can't lose our salvation, but we can lose our inheritance, what God has for us in this world. And I believe God has incredible things for us in this world, but we need confidence. Because think about it, the things that we most desire, the call of God, it's always on the other side of fear, isn't it? It's always on the other side of our insecurities. And it's gonna take confidence in God to get us to that other side, to take us in to the will of God, into the plan of God, into the dream of God. And if we don't have that confidence, well, I could read it like this, throw away your confidence and God will not reward you at all, okay? But if I read it, do not throw away your confidence because your confidence to God is so valuable that he's gonna richly reward you for that confidence. Number two. Confidence gets you through the even though moments in your life. What do I mean that even though moments? Like for example, in Psalm 27 verse three, David says this, even though a war breaks out against me, I will still have confidence. So he says, even though a war breaks out against me, I will still have confidence in God. Now, I don't know about you, but I would probably fail that test. I think if just like five bad men with knives came at me that I would probably run and I would probably lose confidence. But David is taking a step further because he is a warrior. He has faced more than five men coming at him at, at one time. But he says, even though an army surrounds me, comes against me, I will not throw away. I will not lose my confidence. I will maintain my confidence. Because David, think about it. How did he defeat Goliath? It was interesting, if you go to Florence and you see Michelangelo's David, Michelangelo was the only artist who painted David or sculpted David or depicted David before he killed Goliath. All of these other people showed people holding the severed head of Goliath, etc. after. But Michelangelo's David, you can just see the tension in him. You know, if I got a full body shot here, I could, I, I could do it. You can just see the expectancy. 
and the tension in David. And you just know that, hey, David is a lot smaller than Goliath, but you know David's going to win because his confidence is just so strong in God. So strong. So I believe when David said, the Lord is my shepherd, he's not saying it in a religious, oh, the Lord is my shepherd. He's saying, the Lord is my shepherd because I need you to be my shepherd right now. And I don't have much, but God, I lack nothing. And right now the paths are crooked. It's like I'm walking through the valley of the shadow of death. I need you right now. You are my shepherd. You see, that's another way to, to read it. It's more declarative. Okay, let me get back on track. So what is your even though moment right now? You might say, well, even though I have no money, even though I have this critical inner voice in my head, even though I had a bad upbringing, even though I'm just stuck here, even though this seems impossible, and God is the God of breakthroughs. We can take our even though moments. And I personally, I can count literally, I could stay here for hours speaking about a hundred even though moments in my life where I have seen no way out. It's like there's no exit signs or nothing. Everything's blackness. It looks like when our son had leukemia that his life was going to be, oh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Where even though, and God has broken through and proved himself and sometimes my confidence waned. Uh, sometimes I almost threw my confidence in God in the rubbish bin. But even though I had that little confidence, I've always had that confidence in God. Sometimes it's not strong. Sometimes it's a little, uh, just a little bit like the grain of a mustard seed. But it gets you through those even though moments. Number three, confidence that God is for you and not against you. I don't know, but as a pastor for so many years, people, Christians, believers, focus more, they think that God is looking more at their dirt in their lives than at the gold in their lives. So we spend our whole day thinking, oh, I shouldn't have done that, oh, God's watching me. It's like we spend our whole lives thinking about our dirt, living in our dirt, thinking that God's thinking about our dirt, but it's kind of like, when my son was learning to walk, and both my wife and I, it brought tears to our eyes, and I always wanted to make him walk, like, you know, early, just like a game. I would, like, put him up, okay, walk, Kyle, walk, and kind of help him, and I thought he was going to, like, walk at, at one month or something like that. And I remember one time where he really walked, the first time on his own, and we said, Kyle, walk. <laughs> And then he's walking, and he's just falling down, he's falling down, but he's walking. And, you know, Melanie and I, we're not focusing on the fact that he's falling down and saying, oh, Kyle, Kyle, you're a faller, you're going to just fall your whole life, you know, and, and you know, you, you, everything you do, you're just falling down all the time. No, we focused on his gold, not on his dirt, on the gold in him. And we encouraged him and encouraged him, and you could see he was so proud of himself. And suddenly he had this confidence that came into him, you know, and it was just like the power of confidence in him was incredible. And in that day, his walking improved 500%. But what if we were undermining him? Wonder if, what if we were just concentrating and saying, oh, you fell again, and you fell again, and you have that, and he lacked confidence, didn't have any self-confidence. But confident, confidence is something, it's joyful. It's empowering, and we can ask God for confidence. So confidence that God is for you and not against you. Paul says in Philippians chapter 1, verse 6, and by the way, he's in prison, okay? But he says this, being confident of this very thing, that he which has begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Now, that's wonderful confidence. That's like saying, okay, Kyle, yes, you're stumbling. Yes, you're falling down, but you are walking. Yes, you fell down a hundred times, but you did take five you know, steps in a row. So let's applaud that. I'm confident that one day you're going to be walking and running. And, uh, you know, that's the type of confidence that Paul has. That are you confident that God is working in you? Are you confident that God is for you and not against you? Or are you confident that he, he loves you, that he wants to show his favor and his grace? If we have that confidence that we have a loving father who wants the best for us, wow, 
And I understand it's hard for people who have not had loving fathers, like Joyce Meyer, for example. Uh, it's hard, but to know that we have a loving father who enjoys our humanity, just like I enjoyed my son learning to walk, even though he was making mistakes. And then when he learned to ride a bicycle, especially my daughter, etc., then they fell even more. There is blood all over the place sometimes, but they still have that confidence because they, they could do the walking part. And, and, and it's just so beautiful to see your children develop confidence. But it's, sometimes it's hard because you have to stand back and let your children make their own mistakes, don't you? They have to kind of develop confidence. It's like Peter getting out of the boat. Oh, Peter, don't get out of the boat. It's cold. You could sink. You could drown. You know, what are you going to do? Your clothes are going to be wet. You know, there's not an extra change of clothes around. Don't do that. But Peter got out, and at least he knew the thrill of walking on the water. And even though he sank, man, even if you could walk on the water for five seconds, for five seconds, would you ever forget that? Would that improve your confidence? Like you could say, well, I'm going to try for 25 seconds next time. Number four, confidence that God can work through you. This is a, a big one. Paul says also in Philippians, and he's in jail, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Or how about this in 1 John chapter 5, verse 14. And this is the confidence that we have towards him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. This is a really big issue with people. People believe that God can't work through them. You know, I've just finished talking about that we're the light of the world, and we look at ourselves and we're saying, I don't even think my wife will say that I'm the light of the world. Look how dirty my apartment is, you know? I don't see any light around here. But it's amazing that God says, Paul says, and he's in jail, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. He only said that, not because the Old Testament said that or something. He said that because of personal experience. He said that in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, where he says, brothers, I don't want you to be uninformed to what happened to us in Asia Minor. We were, we were in a situation that was far beyond our ability to endure. In fact, we felt the sentence of death upon us, like almost a suicidal tendency, like we can't go on, we can't take any more of this. But this happened, this, this happened to show us that it's not our power, but it's God's power. And unfortunately, confidence is developed. You know, before you can get confidence, there's going to be a lot of failure, a lot of insecurity. I remember when I first started doing guitar concerts, and I can't tell you, even my guitar instructor, he said, Kurt, I can't really enjoy life because I'm always thinking about my next, con uh, my, my next concert and the fact that I could humiliate myself and suffer a memory loss or play badly and what's the audience going to think of me? So this guy lived in continual fear but he was so good, but he still lived in fear. And I remember being asked to, to do my first guitar uh, um, concert in, in a theater, and I think people were paying the equivalent of, what, 10 pounds per person to come and see me. And for a whole month, I really had trouble getting to sleep because I didn't have the confidence. And I worked hard, I worked hard, I worried, I worked hard. And you know something? The concert went extremely well. And that gave me the confidence to do another one and another one and another one. But it happened with my preaching. It happened on television. I, I failed so many times. And that's why it says, don't throw away your confidence. Because when you lose your confidence, and you're never, never going to fulfill the call of God on your life or achieve your dreams or what you want to do. It, it always takes that confidence. Uh, one incredible man said to me, who's done so much for God and all over the world, and he said, you know, Kurt, miracles have only happened when I was confident, when I was bold in God. And there's something, I don't want to use the word magical, but no, no, I can say God richly rewards confidence. That's it. Don't throw away your confidence. Why? Because it's valuable to you. Why, why throw it away 
when God richly rewards it. And what are those rich rewards? I can tell you with tears of joy in my eyes when Howard asked me to do television and Gordon years ago because I had failed on television you know, years ago and I, I, I wanted to have nothing to do with television because it represented my failure. I didn't have any confidence and finally it took him a year, it took these guys a year just to get me behind his camera. And you know, developing the confidence to speak to people is, Believe me, it's one of the most joyous things I can do. I love doing weddings. I love doing funerals. I love bringing joy and comfort and hope and, in, into funerals. I love what I'm doing right now. But if I didn't have that confidence, that perseverance, and, and I, I just wouldn't be here. I wouldn't do what I most enjoy doing in the whole world. I love this. I love doing what I'm doing, but I, say, I came so close to saying no. I came so close to just hiding my light and my confidence under the sofa just to protect myself so people would perhaps think good of me. So I want to encourage you today to ask God and be intentional about confidence. So maybe if you have thrown away your confidence, in certain areas of your life, just like we read about this woman. Ask God to bring that confidence back, to revitalize that, that confidence. Learn to see the value and the rewards of that confidence, you know? And then also offer, offer your even those to God, even though I have a, can a diagnosis of cancer, even though I feel that I can't do this. God, I offer you my even though. Here is my even though. Make a difference in my life and he will. So Father God, we thank you for our even those. And we thank you, Lord, that you can give us confidence. We thank you, Lord, that we can have the breakthroughs we desire because of you. God bless you and see you next time. Bye.